All right, so I thought I'd do a little video on just proper bike cleaning. So first off, let's take a look at cleaners. However, car washes are actually pretty good. Um, you know, I've even used car washes that say they have wax in them, and it didn't actually mess up my rotors, which I thought it would contaminate my rotors and brake pads. However, if you can help it, don't get the kind with wax in it. Like for instance, this Turtle Wax brand, it doesn't say that it actually contains any wax in it. And uh, reading it, it's safe for a lot of different materials. Uh, it's actually pretty good. It definitely foams up well, good value. And also at the same time, I got this all from Advanced. Uh, I also got some of this Meguiar's Deep Crystal Car Wash. I haven't got to try yet, but should work pretty good. Get yourself a five gallon bucket, make sure it's clean. Fill up the bottom of the bucket, just the slightest bit. If you get the concentrated stuff, you don't need much. Put it on hot water. Not so hot that you burn your darn hands off though. Mm. You don't need a ton of soap, but you want it to foam up good because that's what's going to get the dirt broken loose. And then as far as tolls here, so I bought a good bit of this stuff in a kit, um, but you're going to want a good drivetrain cleaner brush, something that you can dedicate to the drivetrain because it's going to get greasy and you don't want that to contaminate other parts of the bike with just from touching it. You can see I got grease and that's been rinsed and washed. I also came with one of these brushes, brushes which I found really good for getting in the linkage in between the tire and the rear arc of the linkage. Of course, something for getting into the smaller pivot areas behind the chain ring. This is the main workhorse here, microfiber mitt. This is awesome for doing your tires. A lot of people don't do their tires, I do because it just makes the bike look a lot better. Of course, you don't have to. It's not going to hurt leaving mud on your tires. Uh, I found this brush works really good for tires. Or a brush like this, which is an automotive wheel brush, works really good for tires as well. Uh, I actually used this to get on my rear derailleur, and uh, sometimes I use it for my chainring as well. Um, then here, you want something. This is this one here is actually a little bit hard to clean your chain with, but it's good for your cassette and your derailleur. This uh, I actually made, uh, I designed it in uh, in 3D CAD, and then I printed it out on my 3D printer. I designed it to use dollar store brushes here. So if you look in here, these are just dollar store brushes that I designed to you just cut them off and sl slide them in, uh, and then you screw on the cover here, and you. Put this on your chain, pedal it, move it around with some degreaser, cleans perfect. This here, it's just a spray bottle. So this I'll put on the tires and I'll put on the drivetrain is some extra degreasing power. And all that is, is the concentrate version of LA Totally Awesome. LA is totally awesome, all-purpose cleaner. So this is a concentrate and I mix it, I mix it about uh, like 2 to 10, so you don't need a lot, it goes a long way. Here you can see we have a properly dirty bike. This is my new Levo. And it is definitely dirty. <laughs> Plenty dirty. Um, so we definitely got our work cut out for us. Uh, you can see how it really gets down in. You see here, I've actually put this, uh, this is important on the Levos. Uh, some, anything you can do to keep the mud from going down, like it, it goes all the way down below here. See, it comes out below, right here. So it goes down and over and it covers 
there's an opening that goes into the engine casing that mud can get into if you don't have something there. They sell more fancy things, but I, so far I found that works pretty well. Um, See, so also, if you can, when you buy your bike, buy some 3M Vivid vinyl or equivalent, 8mm paint protection vinyl, uh, cut it out and, and put it on your frame. Uh, it really, really helps protect your frame, but not only that, it makes cleaning it a lot easier. You can see I put it down here where your feet are going to rub. Put it here, top tube. It makes cleaning the bike a lot easier. The dirt comes off easier as well. It's cheap, easy, protect your investment. And as far as actually cleaning the bike, dude, out here in my yard, I just have a cheap bike stand. This is actually from Aldi's. Yes, the grocery store Aldi's. They have uh, like a section of just random stuff and they had this at one point for like 15 bucks or something crazy. And for a while I was using it to repair bikes, but I bought a better stand for that. So I've dedicated it to my bike cleaning stand and it works beautiful for it. You want something to be able to hold your bike up and keep the wheels off the ground so you can clean them easily. What you should end up with is a bike that looks like this. Once you're done cleaning but we'll get there If this was a carbon bike, you would not want to clamp it there. Since this is an aluminum bike, that's going to work okay. Now I moved where I kind of usually clean it from to keep the sun from being behind us. Alright, so... All right, got our hose. Let me actually put my water up. Somewhere. All right, so first thing we need to do is actually put the hose on a sort of, there we go, something that has a wide spray and just get the bike soaking wet. Surfing the top, work down just like a vehicle. Get any of the heaviest stuff off. All right, how wet did we get you? All right, give that a couple seconds to soak. Then we're gonna switch to jet mode after that soaks for a couple seconds. Right. Now that now that the bike is properly soaked up, let's go ahead, turn it on to jet. 
and make sure you stay clear of the bottom bracket so you can go around it but don't don't shoot right into it of course uh, also your fork seals above and below don't use too much pressure you can do something like this you know it's arcing so it's not a lot of power but you don't want to use a ton of power right there headset area don't completely blow it up other than that just take care of your bearings don't blow them up with water So now that you got the heaviest of the mud off, you're going to work your way from the top down, starting at the seat, the handlebars, top tube, work your way down, do the tires last. We're going to use the mitt first, get that all done. Then I like to do the tires uh, last and the drivetrain after that, or the drivetrain then the tires. Okay. Here you can see that I went and I grabbed the microfiber mitt. So I'm going to start with the top of my seat and kind of work my way down. Make sure I have a lot of soap. Um, try and hit the areas that have the least amount of dirt first. So the seat, uh, maybe the top of the top tube, uh, your controls. Make sure you get in your brake levers and shifters in those uh, kind of tight areas. That's what the microfiber mitt's good for with a little finger things it has all over it can really get in there inside your uh, if you have like a stem that has little recessed areas or, or openings try and get in there There's a lot of hidden dirt in there I was trying to hit my cables um, sometimes those can get neglected uh, the grips the end caps try and hit everything you can and then before the make gets too dirty or the water gets too dirty I like to hit my fork um, so I'll work my way down the front of the headset there and then uh, I'll work on the top of the fork make sure I get the adjustment knobs and then the stanchions definitely want to do the stanchions before you get the mitt too dirty um, and as before when I was washing the bike yeah you want to make sure that you don't use too high pressure around the fork seals so you might still have some dirt in there so just keep an eye on your mitt see how dirty it is you can see I looked at it there for a second I'm also also hitting my brake caliper uh, this soap it doesn't have any wax in it so it's fine to hit the caliper with and even the rotor see here I'm cleaning out the mitt and the soapy water and then I'm going to go hit the rest of the top of the frame, kind of the top areas, and the rear shock. Uh, the rear shock is pretty hard to get to, honestly, uh, especially on a bike like this. If you have with the uh, kind of sidearm there, it makes it hard to get that side of the shock, so you can get some dirt that hides up in there. Um, just be kind of creative with the way you use the mat. Get your finger and kind of in the edge of the mat and get into those places, take advantage of all the little fingers on the on the, the mitt. I don't know why I said mat, but mitt to get into those hard to reach places. Uh, you can even, you can't see too well because I'm blocking it, but here I'll show you uh, hopefully again. But see I grab one end of the mitt and then I kind of can wiggle it back and forth and slide it into areas that I can't get to with my big fat fingers. You hit the down tube. Uh, the rear linkage is kind of a pain sometimes, um, so I'm just getting like the main stuff off now, and I know that the linkage is a pain, so I'm going to go and clean the mitt out, soap it back up with some more soap. Um, here I'm just showing that when you clean the mitt out in the water, you want to rub your fingers along it, make sure you get all the dirt particles outside of those uh, fibers. I wouldn't hit the bottom of your um, main triangle until you get everything above it kind of done first, except for the drivetrain and tires, because uh, obviously you're just going to be more mud down there. 
The linkage is a pain to get into. You can see I'm trying to kind of use my fingers to get into the linkage areas. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because you uh, can you use a small brush later on to get the spots you can't get to with this. I just always try and get as much as I can with the mitt first. Of course, make sure you get your seat stays. Hitting the back caliper there. I think a lot of people don't actually clean their caliper, which I'm not sure why, but it makes the bike look a lot nicer. Get the dirt out of it. You don't want dirt hanging around your caliper getting in the seals um, for the pistons. You're not going to get everything with the mitt. Not its job. Rest of that with the brush. All right. Time for the first prints. Okay, I should mention here as well that rinsing often is actually really important. You always want to rinse after you do so much with the soap because you don't want the soap to start drying on the bike. And as well, you can see here that I use a um, sort of like a flat spray pattern on the bike when I'm rinsing. Um, of course, it just makes it faster and you don't need a jet spray when you're just rinsing off soap. All right, now that we've got the first rinse done, we're going to start going into a little more detail with the brushes. First, I'm going to use this guy here. It's going to help me get into the linkage in a couple other areas, but I'm going to keep it away from the heavy grease because I still use it on frame areas. Also really good inside here. Now, if you get too much, if you get too much mud or anything on your brushes or on your mitt, take your hose, squirt it out before you put it back into the bucket. That way, you're not contaminating your bucket more than you need to.
give it another little real quick rinse just to get the soap off it. Next brush. I'm gonna use this guy and some of this. Sap. Tree sap sucks. I'll get that in a second. I don't want to get it all over my brush. Watch your bearing area with the greaser. Tree sap, tree sap is wicked. Alright, these cuddles aren't going to get perfectly clean because it's tree sap. Oh well. get the heavy stuff off with this guy.
back's starting to hurt like hell. Built up right there. Get that off. All right. Oop. Get back on the angle for this. Yeah. Right here. Now you're on it. Tire time. This is the most pain in the ass part. And the least important part. But it really makes the bike pop. Yeah, I will. Okay, so you can see that I went ahead and I put degreaser on the tires. Um, it's not strong stuff as I went over earlier, but it's strong enough that it helps to loosen up the dirt and get it off. Now I just went ahead and I grabbed the tire brush. This brush is actually made specifically for the tires, uh, if you buy the kit that I'm using. And I first use it on the outside of the tire, and I use it so that it gets the rim and the side of the tire in one shot. And I kind of rock the tire up and down as I'm also scrubbing the side of the tire. And you really want to put a lot of elbow grease into this. Um, and then also, once you get that up and down or side to side motion done, um, then the next thing you'll do, and you'll see me do, is that I take it and on the tread of the tire, I'll go kind of front to back, and that's because the way the tread is on a tire, 
if you just go like up and down the tire, it doesn't get next to all the knobs. Um, a lot of people think that cleaning your tires is complete waste, and I mean, you really don't need to clean your tires, <laughs> but it does look a lot better when you do. Now, when it gets time to do your drivetrain, make sure that you clean your chain. Use some degreaser, clean your chain. Uh, chances are you won't have the same chain tool I do since I 3D printed it. Though you can get the files for it on Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer. Um, and also, try and make sure you clean your cassette and your derailleur and your jockey wheels. Um, jockey wheels really build up a lot of grease, like a thick gunk of grease. You want to get what you can off when you're cleaning the bike, and you'll see later on that you actually use a rag after you dry it and everything to kind of get the rest of that off. But you want to get off as much as you can and while you're cleaning the bike. Set it over there on the wall, get it. Thanks. Time to dry.
you always always want to dry your bike since you're done washing it dry it you can let it go a little bit get some of the heavier stuff to drip off but you want to dry it before the water dries up on it, it creates water spots Dealers. And get that little bit. Get that little bit of extra dirt out. Probably can't even see it, but that's on the seals. You wouldn't get it otherwise. I was really picky I'd take out the wheel and get back here, but it's just being crazy. Not like this isn't already. What you can do is use the tire to suck the rug in. And kind of go up and down with the tire. Like, so. Now, since this thing is uh, really clean now and the grass is really wet, I'm actually going to carry it over to the pavement and put it on my other stand so I can show you the last thing I do. is give it a few bounces, get the excess water out, tip the bike up and down, get it out of the little hidden nooks and crannies. So, like that, give it a good bounce. You can see all the water under there. Get it up like this. Get those water spots off or else they're gonna dry like like that into little water spots. But you're gonna look ugly. seat was a little too high so I didn't get it as clean as I should have. I'm short. Right. Now pretty much all this is off of here. So you can get a pretty good idea how clean it is right now. Let's get it up on the fork stand. So I can show you the last step. So we want to get this excess dirt off of this chain. So just get a grip on it. Pedal it around a few times. Get the excess crap off. Get a little bit, get a pinch, and then pinch and pull, pinch and pull. Like 
so. All right, now that that's done. Get your choice of chain lubes. So I've got two here that are good for the, dang it, the screen keeps turning off. These are good for the dry conditions. This is the one I've been using for, since I got my, started uh, two years ago mountain biking. Well, going on three now. Uh, this is a recent one I picked up that I've heard good reviews on. Um, both of these are dry lubes, so they go on wet, but they, then they will dry, all right? Which is good, because that means dust doesn't cling to them. So I'm, I do this, I clean my chain, dry it off and put lube on every time I clean my bike. That way it's gonna push out the water that is still left in the link rollers from washing it. Uh, at least it's gonna help, it's not gonna get all of it out, but it's gonna, and it's gonna keep it from rusting. And that way it'll be nice and ready to go for when you wanna ride. So I don't have a ton of this left, so I'm just gonna finish this stuff off and keep using it for now. Only thing with this thing is the dang tip on the bottle keeps getting clogged up. So when I go to squirt it out, it clogs up on me. All right, so one thing, obviously stay away from your rotor. Let's get a little bit different of an angle here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I try and do this without getting in the way, but I'm just gonna go here go slow and you see it clogged up on me already there should be a full rotation I'll do a couple rotations get it in the links slow so it doesn't fling off everywhere though let's put the cap back on All right, let's check to see if we got any on the tire. No, pretty good there, didn't get any anywhere else. All right, so now let's wipe off the access on the outside here. And this actually helps clean the chain as well since it's wet and it kind of pushes out the dirt and water. Remember how much I got off of that before? How much I got off of that before I put the oil on it when I wiped it down. That's how much I got off after I put the oil on it and wiped it down. So it helps drive out the dirt and loosen it up and the grease, old grease. You really mainly want the stuff, I mean you don't want to take it all off obviously, um, but so, and you know when that stuff starts building up, that's why I like to clean the chain rings every time I wash the bike. I try and clean them, get all the gunk off them as well, because it builds up. And when it builds up, it catches dirt particles in it, and it creates a sanding paste that's gonna wear away your chain and chain rings very fast. And a lot of people miss back here in the jockey wheels. So you really wanna make sure these are clean. You can see there's no grease buildup now. Even though the bike's new, just from those three rides, it had already had a good bit of buildup here. And you'll see it'll really build up with this thick black crap. You wanna make sure you get that off as often as you can so it doesn't eat your chain away. And your sprockets, don't forget the top one. Make sure that's clean. You can see the degrees and brush works well. And then once you, you know, once you, when you're actually cleaning the bike and that, when you get it, pick at the bike now that's clean. If I can get this done. All right, let's take a quick look at the bike now. Let's get these legs all put up. Whoop. 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 Okay, real professional, Jeff. So, the grips, you won't always get them completely clean. But, you know, you want to keep this clean. The less dirt and crap that gets in there, the better. Keep it all clean. Watch when you're cleaning around the headset. 
don't pressure wash this area. I never use a pressure wash on the bike. You don't need to. It's just, it's just being lazy, honestly. Sorry. You know, get in the cracks and crevices. You make sure you get around your fork seals. Getting your fork seals, getting your crown there. You can see there's a little bit of dirt in there. It's really, it's really hard to get in there. See the tires are clean. The bike is shining. Nice. Looks beautiful. Cranks. Pedals are even pretty clean. You know, getting into the linkage is important as well. That dirt and mud sits in there. Get into that linkage, clean it out. Get it good. Get back in here. You see on this bike, it's actually very tight. Uh, it's a little hard to get into, but you find tricks. Uh, even behind the cassette, it's a fairly new bike. So mine hasn't had a lot of buildup back here yet. It's pretty much a brand new bike. But you'll notice you'll start to get dirt back here. Clean that out. Uh, it's okay to clean your calipers and rotors off just be careful what you're using to clean them you see the tires just have a little bit of white crap on them from the pavement now but look how clean they are now these tires have three rides on them that's it but if you keep washing your bike like this like my other bike it's in there right now is also brand new so I can't show you because the frame cracked on my last bike no fault of my own they warranted it um, but if you would have seen it it was in it was over a year old and it was in the same condition as this same brand new condition just keep up the maintenance on your bikes keep up the maintenance you know take care of your investment these things are not cheap be careful when you're washing around your bottom bracket area on a regular bike and on any bike especially on any bike because you have a motor the seal you know is the only thing between the outside world and the internal components of your motor and electronics that are in the motor you know don't forget this don't get lazy and forget to clean inside underneath the bottle all back here, get up in the shock area, get a towel, put it up in the between and pull it up and down, get all around there. Um, if you decide to clean up into the fork area, I used to, you can see there's actually dirt up in there because I don't anymore. I just do a real light little cleaning, but I don't spray, do not spray your hose up into the top tube in your crown steer unit don't spray the hose up there because you're going to wash out all your grease in your headset and you're going to rust the hell out of your bearings don't forget your seat which i almost did because i'm short and you can see if you clean your derailleur it looks good so yeah it's you want to keep it looking like that basically yeah the bike's not very old right now but that's just how i clean them um, when you're spending that much money for something, you want it to last, you want to take care of it. This vinyl protectant film that I put on myself wasn't real hard, it's just very, very time consuming. Uh, it really helps clean the bike easier because it doesn't hold the dirt as much as the matte finish on the frame does, or just regular paint does. The dirt comes off easier when you're washing it. It really protects some rock dings. You can see right there. That's just on the vinyl probably. Yeah, it's just on the vinyl. There's another one here from what, cause I put a big ass lock on this thing. So it'll scratch it if I don't have that on. Just go on the Amazon, look up 3M Vivid Paint Protection Film, eight mil thick. Buy it at least six inch wide. And I'd say six inch wide by 70 is enough to do a full bike for sure. So yeah, six inches by 70 inches long. Six inch wide, 70 inch long is enough to do a full bike. Just get yourself some paper and a pencil. You know, draw out some little templates, put it over the bike, draw out on the paper, cut it, test fit it, trace it onto the vinyl, cut the vinyl out, put it on. That's how I did all this. 
You can see that's how I came up with these areas. I wanted to do this all in one piece, but it would have been too hard of a bend, even with heat. Um, you can use heat to make it more pliable when you're putting it on, like a blow dryer heat gun. To put it on, you want to get a spray bottle with some water and rubbing alcohol. Some people use like baby soap or like Dawn. Uh, I don't find that I need it. And when I use that stuff, it creates like a haze underneath it. So I don't like to use it. I just use water and rubbing alcohol. You don't get to move it around as much. You have to be more precise with it. But the finish looks better. Uh, and then of course you just get, make sure you wet the outside of it and the underneath of it and the back of the vinyl, wet everything. Because when you squeegee over it, you don't want the squeegee to stick and scratch it. You want it to slide over nice. Now, since this is a neat bike, I'm not going to turn it on until it's completely dried out. I'm going to let it completely dry out. But, yeah, that's, uh, this bike in here actually looked the same as far as how muddy it was. This bike was just as muddy. Um, and I clean it the same way. So you can see. However, this bike has only one ride on it. So, of course it's gonna be clean. But it was muddy as hell. Um, but yeah, you can see this little thing I came up with here. So I designed this on my 3D printer. So this, I printed out as in two halves and use a piece of inner tube that is epoxied and screwed into this plastic piece here and then this just zip ties onto the bike and there's an inner tube underneath it to protect the frame as well this zip ties on and it protects the linkage area back here because on my last frame I got chips out of the frame because the rocks getting in it so it's just a nifty little thing I came up with and it actually helps over on the chain side as well to keep the chain from hitting the chain stays see my messy uh messy bike work area here it's my dvo diamond fork that was on my previous frame 